Hello and welcome to the weekly Hukulo Saturday webinar. My name is Michelle. Today is Saturday, March the 2nd, Hello 2019. Hello and welcome to the weekly Hukulo Saturday webinar. My name is Michelle. Today is Saturday, March the 2nd, Hello 2019. Yeah. Someone has a microphone on, so you have to mute everybody. Please. No, I handled it, I think. All right. <clears throat> so today, um, we will have Max Brempel as our guest channeler. Um, I'd like to introduce everybody who's in the room. Uh, we have Christine, Deb, Don, Iwa, Jonathan, Marlene, and of course, Max, Yad, and myself, Michelle. Um, also, we have some announcements about uh, the book that Hugo has put together called From the Galaxy with Love. It is available, and there will be a fall workshop, um, I guess, in relation to it, um, August 8th through 12th in Rochester, New York. Um, can email Angie for details at a speed six four five six at gmail.com. And it's also on hukula.org. And you can also sign up for it at hukula.org. Thank you. Um, and I think uh, we will also be taking questions from the live YouTube. Uh, Don will be bringing those over. And um, I guess we're ready to go. Max? Yeah. Um, give me some entities who you want to have around. And um, and I will bring Yogananda, but um, they might be around, so there, there, there will be a possibility to ask them questions too. Okay. Um, does anybody have requests for mm -hmm. any entities that they would like to hear from? I see the curve type somebody typed. I personally would like to hear from Fish. Uh huh. Or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or the Elohim. <laughs> mm -hmm. I could go on and on. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, whoever yeah. for highest good is a, is also. Say again. Whoever would like to pop in for our highest good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would like to request uh, Pachakutek from the oh. Mayan Empire. Pachakutek. Pachakutek. Wow. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Yad is requesting Metatron. All right. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> so should I should I go now, right? Oh, I did want to mention everybody. If you have a question, please put the letter Q on the side, and I will make a list, and we'll keep questions to two till we get through everybody, and then we can recirculate. Thank you. <clears throat> Give me a minute. Oh, you know what, Max? Actually, mm -hmm. I forgot something really important. Sure, sure. Anybody have a blessing they would like to open this up with. All right. <clears throat> Anybody in the room? Yes, sukuto e sukuto ananayam. Motake as a gay etariana. We are so good to Oshkaranate is go on. May I say a tea shop? On an air say a tea and a man. Namaste. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
Hello, thank you for coming together here. Today, I will speak a little bit about letting go. The time has come of changes. These are the changes that prepare the world, prepare the humanity for giving a birth. And imagine a room where the birth is given. It's a little bit messy, there is a little bit of dirt, little bit of blood, little bit of suffering. The mother might be suffering, the child might be upset, the people around might be worried. <clears throat> but it is a birth of something beautiful, it is a birth of something which will unwrap in the future. Imagine another image, the image of a rose blossoming and blooming. And the old petals fall away, but the rose grows bigger and prettier. <clears throat> The idea is that you are on the surface of a rose and the reality starts to peel off. The layers of the reality peel off. Peel off. And whatever worked before will no work again. It will not work again. And it is your choice to stay with a dying petal or to go with the future. I invite you to choose the future. I invite you to let go of an old petal which falls on the floor and disintegrates. That's how you look how you might look. I invite you to look at the humanity. I invite you to look at what is happening and pay attention not to the damage, not to the disintegration, not to the negativity. It all falls away. It was powerful before, but it will be unimportant later. The money is still very important. But the system with the money will fall away eventually. The politics is very important. But with the birth of new humanity, the old politics will fall away and the important figures, important events, important countries, all of that, the patriots, the conservatives, the liberals, all of that will become completely irrelevant. So I invite you to untangle yourself from the layers that fall out. And the transition is done by choice. There will be a time, and there are times constantly of despair. 
of darkness. And at that time, I invite you to choose the future, to choose the positivity, to choose the light. It's a choice. It's not something that you analytically discover, because if you start discovering, you see only the darkness. It's not something you find outside. It is something that you create from inside. Remember, recall your understanding that it is the reality that you create, you co-create. And everything else is just the prompt for you to blossom. It is a hero's journey, and you are the hero. It is your journey. It's all about you, personally. About your vortex of uniqueness. Recall, remember that you are made of love, made of energy. You are indistinguishable. You are undestroyable. Whatever happens to your body doesn't matter. It is your experience, it is your soul which matters. And you are creating all this experience by yourself, with the help of others. But it is your, your creation. And when the petals of the reality starts falling away. When the layers of reality peel off, don't be scared. It is the beginning of the process of the birth. And by choosing love, by choosing being loved, by choosing the light inside, you are attracted to the core, you are attracted to the future beautiful baby humanity, the next root race, the next hope of the universe. All the drama is made for you to experience that. It is up to you to experience that. So give yourself appreciation, give yourself gratitude, value yourself, value your experience, and decide to create a positive experience. That's the mechanics, how their experience is created. It's not coming from outside, it's you making it. So focus on what you want. Focus on your higher excitement. Focus on your own light. And you will be attracted to their life. You will be attracted to their layers which are of love. You will land in the new layers which are bright, healthy, harmonious, and filled with people of your kind. You will find your tribe by creating it. Create your tribe and find it. Create your home and find it. Create your place and drama which you like. And you do it by letting go of the old, letting go of something that doesn't work anymore. So let go, let go and choose your own light. And with that, I invite a conversation. Thank you. I missed it. Is this Yogananda? Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, Ewa has a question or two for you. Hi. Hi, Yogananda. This is Eva. Um, I have a question. The subject of letting go is actually very good for me to hear about. Um, 
I recently found out that the reason I am afraid of going to any large bodies of water um, is that 15,000 years ago I was a mermaid and I was, I witnessed my um, brothers and sisters being eaten uh, by huge, huge monster-like animals which were still swimming in the waters at that time. And in current time, when I am in a situation that I am in a water, I see, I see like a um, huge animal swimming underneath, which frightens me. So basically I don't go anymore. My question is, if I am still in current lifetime, remembering what happened, the trauma which happened 15,000 years ago, how do I let go of all of this? Like, like practic practical, looks like something inside of me remembers traumas in all kinds of lifetimes. This is, this is a block for this lifetime. So do you have any practical advice how to let go of all of this, how to move on? Thank you. Give me a second. <clears throat> I just give you a bit. <laughs> Step one is to accept what happened. Realize in any trauma of that kind, you are not the only one who suffered. You are also the one who was the predator as well. You're not the only one who was, you're not only the mermaid, you're also the creators of mermaids. And you're also the ocean. It is the whole tragedy, the whole experience is you. You created it and it is in your power to resolve it. Realize the ocean is you. Accept it in the past, accept it in now, in the now. Embrace the whole experience. Respect it. It served its purpose. The idea of mermaid was created and then it was given to the universe. It is now living elsewhere as well. It's a human fish experience and it is beautiful. And it is given to the humanity because the humanity needs to embrace the ocean and needs to merge back into the ocean. The dream of flight and dream of swim are still there and they are very valid because it is the fear of separation. And the humanity, humanity needs to merge back into the water, merge back into the flight and reunite the elements. 
It's all about unity. So while being afraid of the bigger body of water, you're not only solving your personal <coughs> trauma of the past, you're solving the separation of the humanity from the big body of water. By merging back with the ocean, you're helping the humanity to reunite with it. I hope it helps. This is quite, quite incredible answer. I'm grateful for that. It brought up a, a new short question. If uh, humanity um, received a gift of fish human, is there also a bird human? Of course. That's very exciting. <laughs> okay. Can you tell us a little bit about it? These are the Egyptian gods with bird head. They are reuniting with humanity as well. How, ab how about there were these images of half women, half birds? Yes, yes, that's it. It's all coming together. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much. Some of the humans carry that idea. Some of the humans carry that soul. Some of the humans carry that genetics. Bird humans are coming back. It's all coming together. They will be walking among humans. I would say more. Go ahead. What time frame would that be? Bird humans coming back, that is. Okay, there is no time prediction here, but the opportunity just arises now for the seamless contact you expect in the first contact to be big and everybody expects it's a big possibility for the first contact to be huge but also the possibility arises that their visitors will just be walking on earth without creating a big splash of news that it becomes so commonplace that people wouldn't even pay attention. They will just shift to a new understanding without much ado. How that happens, it's hard to explain. It doesn't work in all terms. It doesn't make sense in the terms of the old humanity. But you can see the shifts of the reality are here the layers of the code the layers of the matrix the petals of the rose the layers of the ocean all mixed together so you might find yourself in the situation you might find yourself in the reality where the aliens just walk on streets being part of your life and nobody cares nobody thinks it's unusual it's just a new energy coming that makes it possible we will see if that develops but this reality already exists and it might merge with the earth reality that's just a possibility cannot give a time on it but if you if it makes you happy you might be attracted to it so you might end up in that part of the game in that part of the matrix in that part of the drama don't be surprised and when you see them, <laughs> what do you do? It's up to you. I suggest just treat them as old friends. Just treat them as old friends. 
don't explode. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think I'm going to volunteer to be a harpy. It's <laughs> great. Thank you. Uh, Yad had a question. He would like to know how can we balance our own individuality with the need to share with others, with the need to be a part of a group or society? slash society so how do we keep our individual selves and also be part of the whole <clears throat> best practices help me here give me a little bit more of the drama give me a little bit more of the trouble how do you see that question <laughs> it seems too Polished, there is a, a personal drama hidden there, but I need a little bit of help from you to uncover it. Yad, would you like to share your chaos and drama? <laughs> I don't know. Yad may not want to. Okay. I will take it as is. Okay, he wants to be his true self, he's saying. He wants to be his true self. Is there more you want to add to that? Um, yes, one moment, please. We may not have a um, microphone. <laughs> so you might never find the answer. Accept it as um, part of the challenge. But searching for the answer is a valuable experience. Consider yourself to be an outsider. Consider yourself to be placed here as an observer. You're an ultimate outsider. You're an ultimate observer. There is nothing else expected from you, from you other than to be a watcher and to watch. And that already validates the experience. That already validates your desire to be in the action and watch it from inside. And another alternative consider yourself to be a hero on a journey you are creating this experience you are the center of the experience you have to go through self-discovery and everybody else are your friends to help you in self-discovery Everybody else, the friends and foes, are there for you to create the drama and to reach the illusory goal and to become the savior of the world. Consider yourself as a third alternative, to be a hand of God the eyes of God, the representative of God. It is a choice. It is a choice. Embrace others. They will never be you, but they are distorted reflections of yourself. They are you in a way. So by being losing yourself in others and by discovering yourself in others you discover yourself so by looking at the mirror you find something new about yourself by looking in the eyes of others you find something new about yourself it's all valid it is all a choice Yogananda. yes um, 
Yad wanted to elaborate and say he wants to be his true self, but he doesn't find it much help in general to discover his roots or origins. Um, like maybe that makes him, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb, Yad, correct me if I'm wrong, um, and say, you know, sometimes we try to associate with like our past life group or soul family is different areas we've been lifetime through lifetime through lifetime. And, um, so like, my own personal experience, I was very attached to the Arcturians and I had a really mal feeling for other groups, etc. But I think we've all been all the things. And he wants, I think he wants to step into his own sovereignty and be who that is, not who he's been told he's related to. Um, and... Yes, yes. And I validate that as well. It is also a choice. You see, one, if you choose to be of that background, say, say of Arcturian background, it's up to you. If you choose to be of Draconian background, it's up to you. It's a choice. You get prompts in this game. It's all an illusion which can become true. It's all part of the drama that you create. But it is your creation. I bless, authorize, initiate you into making the choice and creating your past from this present, creating your roots from now. From here, you create what you want. And don't be disappointed that you never discover who you are because that is part of the game part of the rules ultimately you are all that is ultimately you are the creator in disguise you are a creator in disguise and searching for roots or Disconnecting from the roots, it's your choice, which is actually secondary to being a creator in disguise. Thank you very much. Um, Trinity has a question or two. <laughs> good, good morning, hey. everybody, and good morning, Yogananda. Good morning. This is Safira. Hey, Safira. I am still trying to understand the difference between my astral body and my fourth dimensional self. Are they one and the same? The, you know, the whole, our, what, our soul, our spirit, our astral being, our fourth dimensional, it's still hard to put it in any kind of order, but I really... For the moment, I'll be happy to know if my astral projection of myself is the same definition as my fourth dimensional self. Thank you. Give me a Thank second. You. Okay. As always, I'm trying to see the underlying drama. <laughs> and uh, of course, from a certain perspective, from many perspectives, it's all the same. It's your true self dreaming up a life. I can give you the drama if you would like. <laughs> Thank you. Please go ahead. So, 
I have a relationship with somebody in the fourth dimension. So it's been described to me that I have a, an avatar there and my fourth dimensional self goes there and stays with the avatar and has this relationship there. But I've also been told that it's my astral which goes there to my avatar. So I just, and somebody said it's the same astral self or 4D. So I'm trying to understand, you know, are they two completely separate things or is it my astral which is going to my avatar? That, I guess that's the drama. <laughs> it's not really a drama, but I, I'm just trying to understand it. Just a sec. <laughs> Thank you. Let me say that you are not the only one in that predicament. Many of light workers, many of you, have the same arrangement. And it works well. You do the work down below, but the experience comes back and forth from their other dramas where you are involved to your physical self and from your physical self to the other dramas. Yes, the mechanics is that the physical mind is somewhat separated. It's somewhat, it's apart and separate. It is at the same time a part of the astral body and at the same time it can be separated. If you look at, say, people who lost their memory, people who lost their connection, Alzheimer's sufferers, they have leftovers of their physical mind, but the soul very often is not there. It just steps out. And then sometimes it comes back and they come back to here. They can remember you, communicate to you, and then they disappear. Their soul sort of disconnects. So that's a good understanding of the fact that physical mind could be separate. And sometimes it is separate just because it is so focused on the material that it pushes away the astral, pushes away the soul. It's not that the soul is not there. It is just an illusion of being separate because you are made of the soul. You are made of the same matrix. You are made of the same love. It's just an illusion of being separate. So yes, ultimately you are part of the astral. At the same time, you can, there are mechanisms, there are tools in your DNA. Hmm. The demons, there are little tiny demons that work on making that illusion of you being separate. They're sitting in every cell, especially in the brain, and sorting out this is astral, this is material, this is astral, this is material. But it is the same love, it's just there is a barrier of forgetfulness. Every night when you sleep, you come back to that unity, but then every morning there is a little demon, or how do you say, a little elemental, little devoted being, the fairy of sleep, which makes you forget that you are the same. So it is a carefully crafted illusion of being separate. What else to say here? They say, uh, just one more thing. There is um, a process. That's why it's important for you to think about, about that now of reuniting. Yes. Reuniting and bringing more of the astral here and charging your physical cells with the astral energy. Charging your physical body with four, fourth and higher dimensional energies. And then you go through life carrying that energy with you. Sometimes it hurts a little, but often it helps the whole 
experience. It helps you to serve your purpose on multiple dimensions. So whenever you have a minute or whenever you are desperate, bring in that energy and reunite and understand the pains you are feeling you can send up there and they will be transformed to joy and don't keep them let them go and send them up there in a bigger part of you and in exchange you will get energy happiness intuition bliss and many things that don't have words in human language but you will get that four dimensional higher dimensional multi-dimensional energy back back down here i hope it helps thank you yogananda your answers are always so beautiful and loving thank you so much thank you for asking um we have someone lily path joining us from youtube she has a question she would like to know what celestial beings are now the guardians of the earth <laughs> I hear a huge crowd screaming we are we are we are <laughs> <laughs> um if you look outside if you look on the earth it is tangible you fly on airplane you can imagine flying around the whole planet if you look at earth from space it's tangible it's limited it's only a few billion people it's only so many trees, so many molecules. It's very tangible. It is very real. At the same time, the army of celestial beings that make that beautiful projection, that be beautiful hologram, the army is much huger, much bigger. It is immensely bigger than the earth and the attention is paid is huge it is a lot of love sent down sent here at the same time in this experiment every little human every little molecule every little cockroach is given the freedom of choice so with all the love you are entitled to choose that's the nature of the earth experiment so choose whatever you wish and realize at the same time that you are being watched helped and loved and thank you for asking No, so that's is it mul many multiple groups um, races many huge number of multiple groups they have have huge hierarchy hold on a second okay. look at the urantia book it spells out the hierarchy can you repeat what it? Urantia, U R A N T I A, Urantia book. Okay. So nothing has changed um, in the most recent past. So we have the same guardians we have had. In the past. Oh, no! It's it's yeah. Um. The old creators are all here. They're coming back to be a part of taking birth. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
yeah, assistant and a birth. So midwives are here. The new root race of humanity is being born in these few centuries. Many of those guardians um, change their shapes, change their appearances, change their dimensionality, because in the time of the humanity history, they also evolved. So they come, they might come in a new appearance, but it is the same energy, the same consciousness. Yes, the, the planets are shifting, the stars are shifting, their older predictions are coming true. So yes, the gods are back. Yes. <laughs> Sounds like a good song. Um, thank you very much for that. Thank you. Uh, I have a question, actually. Um, I've been pretty lazy on studying um, about the energy bodies we have. And I've recently begun reading a book called The Hands of Light. Uh, by Barbara Brennan, and she talks about the seven layers of the auric field, and then further goes on to talk about, well, so number one, are you familiar with the idea, and do you agree with the concept of the seven layer auric field? Number seven is, yes, is um, in a part, in a very root, in a very beginning of human shape it goes beyond the planet the human shape has number seven deep in the sacred geometry of the human shape so what is the sacred geometry you're referring to is it one specific or multiples multiples and um according to Barbara Brennan, in this book, she also talks about each chakra, of which there could be, she talks about seven or up to 12. Um, I mean, there's more than that, but I mean, main ones. Um, so, and each of them having, okay, so you don't just have one chakra in one layer of your aura, but in multiple layers of your aura. So, like, your heart chakra might be in your etheric, and then your emotional, and then your mental, and then your spiritual fields, or it might be in the three above that, um, with regard to healing, or just functioning as a human being. So sometimes somebody could say, well, your chakra is blocked, and often she will answer, well, in which layer? Right. So if you could expand on that, that would be great. Thank you. <clears throat> Let me ask why you're asking this question. What is, where is the drama underneath? Um, there's no drama. I just have never exposed myself to this information and um, it's not actually really kind of what people talk about and I've been doing healing for a long time and I have never known that I mean I only do mine by intuition so I'm just delving into the mechanics of things so just out of curiosity and um, it's like the energy, the world of energy is so far more complex than I could even have begun to comprehend. <laughs> um, I've been reading with the Hathors material and uh, trying to study some sound, um, play around with sound and learn about sound. I mean, I've just been doing it intuitively and not knowing the science behind it or maybe the sacred geometry behind it. 
or the self makeup. But um, anyway, so I'm just learning new things and um, I want to corroborate, I suppose, if that is what you see also. Thank you. Yes. All you said is about right. It is a complex art of creation of the human body. It is a complex art of creating the biology. And the complexity there is limitless. It's huge. At the same time, there are some basics underneath which have penetrate their metaphysical knowledge and go from teaching to teaching, staying there. So number seven, yes, is part of the creation of the life, especially for the human. Number five, same thing. Number 12, same thing. They overlap and are used to create the humanity. Mm -hmm. The chakras. It is a frequency mm -hmm. which is created by your biology or the other way around. The biology is created by that frequency. They come together and enrich each other. Mm -hmm. Consider the distance from the head to a chakra. The bigger the distance to the vertebrae, the bigger the distance from the head to the vertebrae, the lower the frequency and the aliens and animals will ta with tails they can support ever lower frequencies and resonate with the earth even more just a clue the humans losing the tail disconnected from the ground so to ground back, you can meditate on your lost tail, meditate on the tail idea, and that will allow you to go catch some earth energies. That's what shamans do. They meditate on the lower chakras and work on the basic elemental energies of earth. Yeah, as a healer, though, I usually think of chakra as just one piece, but this one is saying, like, it resides separately with separate consciousnesses in different layers of your auric field. And so if you're, like, we're a diagnostician, say, then you would want to be able to see each of those fields and see which field needed the healing do you see that also that this isn't just a vortex of energy that we bring in and it's just on one place like it's inside the if you're on the physical but it also extends out and has different issues in different layers of the aura yes yes all all to that okay. yes um there is a crosstalk. There is a wonderful crosstalk. And every time two numbers resonate to each other, 5 and 7, 7 and 12, you get a crosstalk between um, those dimensionalities. So there is a dimensionality of fate, of life purpose. And it has all these components such as Willpower, mind, mental plane, astral plane, and so on. And when they resonate with the number seven of the biology of the human body, each can resonate with each, creating new patterns, new vortices, new ideas. So yes, you can use each frequency to connect to each fundamental idea of the purpose, fundamental idea of the 
Mm, karma. So, karmic healing is connecting through your energies to the underground purpose of life and healing the sickness based on understanding and uniting with the purpose of life of this individual soul. Karmic healing is about understanding where trauma came from and working on it, helping the, the sick to understand where they got stuck and to choose to unstuck in their karmic path. So yes, there here is your purpose of life resonating with chakras and you can work on different chakras to address that issue. Now, number seven corresponds to days of the week. Number seven can be aligned with the planets. So, to avoid being lost in this complexity, stuck with one tradition, stick with that one tradition and from it look around and unite with other traditions. So, from Reiki to astrology, from Reiki to Hinduism, from Reiki to Buddhism, from Reiki to Karma, from Reiki to Kabbalah, and so on. Hmm. Be on one platform, and while being grounded in that platform, see the connections. They all are interlinked. They are all interlinked. And uh, walk your path every day, it would be different. There are 12 notes, and there are 7 notes. Mm -hmm. That's another clue. How 12 makes 7? There is something very simple in physics which allows you to see that 7 and 12 both make sense in the same octave. What would that look like in uh, the form of sacred geometry? I fail to describe. I cannot describe it. I. <laughs> it will look beautiful, but I cannot describe it in words. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, but the question is great. Google it. All right. I'm. I'm gonna pause on that topic because I'm a little distracted to pay attention to the answer. <laughs> so. Um, I think Moonlight had a, a really good question. Moonlight, would you like to ask your question? I think it's a fascinating question, one I've never heard asked on this, on Hoopla. <laughs> uh, uh, sure. Um, I, I was just wondering, because uh, I was watching a, a YouTube video about, like, spontaneous human combustion and and they they you know it's a mystery like why it happens are you saying the people just explode yeah no? just just catch catch on fire you know just uh and like only a day, um, their body burns, but nothing like on, like on the, on, um, like the floor or anything catches on fire, um, around them. Okay. Um, there is some blockage here. I cannot go far enough in the explanation but can first take a deep breath I accept that idea don't be scared by that idea accept it as transdimensional shifts accept it make it easy it's a commonplace thing and don't put your traditional human judgment on what happens it is certainly not death 
It is just a physical expression of the idea of the phoenix. There is a disappearance of physical shape here and appearance of a new shape elsewhere. Oh, so it's like a transdimensional jump just um, glorified. Hum, 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 hum. So there is uh, grief and fear connected to that. Disconnect from it. Focus on the bright side. It is a transdimensional jump. Okay. So is that a, an ascension jump? You're saying there's lower vibration emotions connected to it, but they're literally spontaneously combusting into flames. Right. It's not that ascension, but it is. it has the element of ascension. It is a personal ascension. I of the phoenix type Sorry. I can, go ahead i can see see maybe that like because they're maybe it has to do with their vibration vibration raising to such a level you know that they uh they can't just contain that big vibration in their physical body and that's what happens could be does that sound accurate? Tro don't try to talk yourself into finding the drama there and the sickness. Take it as um, a miracle that is justified. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Does Thank the person you. who spontaneously combusts, do they choose that path or is that something put upon them? If it was chosen, it wouldn't be spontaneous. So basically, somebody's maybe playing a video game and zaps them? <laughs> That's an attitude. More accurate? <laughs> That's an attitude, yes. Okay. Just don't think about it too much. It's okay, everybody. All right, so done. Exactly. Can you repeat that? That's exactly my message. <laughs> I know, that's what you said. Don't worry about the ugly details behind it. Just move on. Okay. Yep. So, <laughs> Don has a question about whales. Good blessings, Yolanda, or Yogananda, sorry. Um, my question is regarding a sperm whale that was found in the middle of the Amazon jungle. Uh, I believe it was either this past month or this past past week. I was just wondering how that whale got there. Can you explain that one, please? Thank you. The details are blocked from me, but it is exactly what I relates. I, I suspect, I suspect, it relates to what I described about layers of, re of the reality peeling and layers of the reality mixing together. We are in a stage where multiple programs are plugged in the same matrix. And the matrix transforms so fast that There are lots of incompatible things mixing together. So where there was an ocean in one part of the scenario, there is a land in another, and when they, these two dramas are mixed together, you get some uh, mix-ups. So it is, um, it's becoming a common place, don't be surprised. It is uh, what I'm talking about. Don't be worried about little things. It is the matrix is given birth to a new matrix. So the layers will fall off. If you choose to focus on the layer that falls off, you will get stuck there and you will see a lot of disintegration. If you focus on what is being born, if you focus on the baby, 
and not on their dirt, then you will be naturally attracted to their most exciting development. And that's possibly unfortunate side effect of transforming the, the matrix into the new one. And it is taken as unavoidable disharmony, but a lot of loving beings are working on cleaning up the mess. So trust them to do, and if you wish to join them, you're welcome to. There is a lot of beings cleaning up the mess, so you can help them as well. But I invite you to focus on the goal of transforming the matrix. It's unavoidable in a way that the old matrix is falling apart anyway. It's either up or down. There is no way to stay in a place where it is. It is pregnant and it has to give birth. Understood. Uh, a little like uh, when a cell divides, would you say? Yes. It's more like giving birth than dividing into two equal parts. Okay. I fit. That's, that's a good answer. Thank you very much. I completely did not understand that. Is that like timelines colliding or is that like mitosis it's mitosis okay i have to go back to college my and, class in that i don't know what that is so and and the <laughs> diameter of the planet is also expanding simultaneously from the core so we have a live whale in the rainforest just yes. by Yes. And I heard him talk, Yogananda, I heard you talk around it and say, stay focused on positive things, but I didn't hear an answer. How did you get that? Yeah. Just a second. Imagine yourself being at the Hollywood studios. You walk from stage to stage, and in one stage they shoot in one movie, in another stage they shoot in another movie, and then some crazy movie director comes and says, "Let's remove the separators and play all the movies at the same time without the walls." So the whale from one studio ends up in another studio, in another movie. Uh, so the reality is emerging. We are now in the process of bringing lots of new four-dimensional energies, bringing lots of new scenarios into the Earth scenario. So in one scenario, the Earth is flat. In another scenario, the Earth, and it comes from medieval centuries. And another scenario, it is the aliens are walking on the streets and nobody is surprised. So all comes together into one merged reality so don't be surprised if things end up incompatible if you focus on that you might um end up in the bad in the negative disintegrating um, timeline uh -huh. if you focus on the positive side you will end up in a harmonious timeline so focusing on that whale is bringing you down it's uh it's uh it's uh i'm sure there is some explanation that it's blocked from me but i would suggest focus on the positive side that it is a promise of miracles it is one of the miracles uh which seems like negative but it is a, a potential for positive miracles Lots of light beings and guardians are saving the matrix from disintegrating, but by infusing it with great ideas, great energies, great potentials. That is fascinating. <laughs> okay. Um, Yogananda, I think Trinity had another question for you. And then after that, Uriyaman. 
Hello again, Yogananda. Hello. I would like to know if you could describe your ascension into the spiritual world after you passed away on the earth, what it was like, and if you can describe the kind of spiritual world you're in now, that would be awesome. If you would like to, of course. <laughs> yeah. The details are personal and they are blocked from being broadcasted. But I can say to you that the process for me was gradual. So dropping the body was a secondary experience. I was already so much out there that it was just a liberation to drop the body. And my peers saw that. I wasn't there in the body much more. The last few years I was more and more in the spirit and less and less in the body. I was still taking care of things I had to take care about. And for us who practice meditation and practice yoga, practices about um, living in the spirit and in the body at the same time, and saturating the, the physical body with the spirit, it is a conscious choice when to leave the body. So we do it by remembering the art. Many other cultures do the same. So it's not something very unique to yogis. It is just the forgotten art of reincarnation and leaving the body and keeping their the most valuable experience all in harmony living the body with about without tragedy it was very easy no tragedy mm. and the spirit world is uh, we can speak about it in many words but the words cannot describe it there is a dimensionality which is hard to stretch in a sequence in a consecutive sequence of words and there is not enough words for that but it is uh, timelessness timelessness and more volume more depth more depth timelessness and depth are you on a realm where it's like <clears throat> what's been described as eternal spring like the, it's always beautiful and lush and a lot of similar souls around to commune with um, imagine a shopping mall with multiple uh, floors you can choose to be on one floor or on another floor you drive around on uh, elevators and it's huge so you can't even imagine how big it is so i choose where to focus my attention at the time and my attention is actually on what is happening on the planet on this planet and uh, it's it's projections it's other projections it's um multiple timelines multiple worlds multiple projections so it's the 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 current reality where i'm speaking now is um part of connected world so the drama here is um, is replayed in other ways in other sister connected realities so I'm paying attention to all of those that's where I am so it's uh, beautiful and ugly at the same time <laughs> thank you you know um, there are some well-known people who went to the spiritual world and then channeled their experiences through a, a human because it's a shame that um, we only hear you through Max, or at least I do, uh, once in a while. 
Uh, is there anybody you are planning to channel through and continue your teachings and sharings and wisdom soon? Yes, absolutely. Um, yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. So it's going to be something published that others can can read. Is that correct? At some point. Or currently. Or currently. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I guess you can't give me more details. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. If you can notice, I I, I <laughs> spoke to many people, was a friend with many people, and I continue doing that. I'm speaking through many. I see. I was thinking more of a book. Uh, you know, like, for example, um, Sir Lawrence Olivier uh, wrote Channel Through Someone, and the book is called Postmortem Journal, and he describes the different levels of spiritual world that he visited and his own experience. And um, so I was wondering if you're planning to do something like that, that it can be a book, not only about your experiences there, but just your teachings and your, you know, the, the continuity between what you experience on earth and what you experience there. Like if you could describe for people on earth what it's like because it's sort of like um, knowing ahead of time what's where we're going is sort of it's very encouraging. <laughs> yes, um, it's your choice. I uh, there is uh, my um, <laughs> resources are not limited by number of channelers, so. I get a lot of energy and help. So if anybody wants to connect to me and write or connect to me and channel, it's not any problem. I would be always welcoming that. There is energy that coming through. It's like it's like channeling even higher energies. I am also a channel. So if you want to channel, I will channel as well. Thank you so much. I'm finished with my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Just out of curiosity, um, what dimension or density are you? As you can see from my life, I was in many dimensions at once, and I continue that habit. Mm -hmm. Where does the bulk of your consciousness reside? Mm -hmm. Just a sec. I'm in um, counting, calculating. Just a sec. So through my life, I became even more a better expert in humanity. So I lived through the 20th century, big part of the 20th century. So that knowledge helps me to understand as ascension on that level and i was in a unique position so i met a lot of people and connected to much energy so that attracts my attention mm -hmm. much of it is still here in your time mm -hmm. so that's where i'm serving big part of my attention is service on that level mm -hmm. and through you people how do you call it better through the channelers through the light workers i'm connected even more to this time so much of that energy connecting me to you right now at the same time my main focus is on the whole planet transforming so ascension is my specialty and it happens on many levels so uh, you want to give a number. Ascension happens around the um, third dimension, fourth dimension, but there is a lot of energies underneath and above that 
guided. So some energies uh, guide their countries, their cultures, their languages, the types of people. So these are big energies of very high level, of the creator level. So we deal with all of that. So I would say I'm spread over dimensions, but my focus is on this planet's ascension and sister worlds transforming in parallel. I think that's I a think pretty reason, much exact answer. Great. The reason I was asking is sometimes when um, somebody wants to channel an entity, it makes a huge difference on how it feels in the body, like vibrationally. Um, if the either channeling is at fourth dimension, fifth dimension, or if you go to ninth or twelfth, the energy is really intense. That's what I was asking. Like, what kind of energy can you channel to another, to, to a person? Like, what kind of experience, what dimensional experience would they have energetically? Um, yeah, the, um, the creation of the, uh, the ascension is a big part of ascension happens on higher dimensions, like seven, nine, 12, and so on. So, so we are, pl I, I'm distributed. <laughs> <laughs> seven through nine, three through nine. <laughs> okay. Oh, Udi Yaman has a question for you. Thank you very much. Greetings. Thank you. Greeting. Hello, I, I hope my voice is clear. Your voice is good. Okay, so uh, I had a question about my home country, which is India, which was your home country as well, I guess, uh, when you were north. Yes. And uh, so my, my question is, uh, is it true that we have a major role in the ancient process? Uh, what, a part of the question was lost. Can you repeat, please? Thank you. Yes. So my question is, is it true that India would play a major role in the upcoming ascension process and would actually be uh, guiding the world in a sense? Because that's an idea which I get quite frequently. Just a second. Just a second. <laughs> absolutely yes. Um, oh, okay. absolutely yes. Part of that is teaching the world how to combine the physicality, yes. How to combine simplistic physicality with high spirituality. Part of that is teaching the world of paying attention to detail, at the same time transforming their, the universe. Part of that, in teaching the world how to be in peace during the turbulent times. Part of that is teaching the world how to be together, united. Part of that is the family traditions of India are unique and carry their still remembered, still very valid knowledge, which is lost in many other parts of the world. So the family tradition is still kept and it will be integrated in the future. And it's a great luck that 
the world is integrating well and the India is integrating well into the matrix of thinking, technology, language and uh, even the pop culture, even the pop culture. I see. It's not about leading from above. It's leading from through all through all layers. It's integration and leading from being everywhere, from being everywhere, through being merged together. So when you blend, the blending is happening as you see it. So when you blend, it is, <laughs> it's like a spice ingredient, which makes it a huge difference. <laughs> I see. Uh and uh, can you tell me what role I'm going to play in the upcoming uh, ascension, like in India? Because I believe I will be living in India itself uh, for the next uh, next few decades. So, My glance into the future is shaded. There is a veil which doesn't let me see at the moment. I see. But I see an eye looking at me. And I see gold and indigo. And it looks royal. So here are four symbols for you, symbols for you to contemplate uh, an eye just a single eye not two eyes an eye a human looking eye gold indigo and royalty that's all is open at the moment okay i i, I know the volume uh, issue i couldn't read what you just said so uh could you please repeat uh four symbols are shown a human eye Royalty, gold, and indigo. Oh, I see. I see. Okay, so um, I think I'll let the uh, next person ask the question. Uh, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. You're muted, Michelle. My apologies. Thank you. <laughs> um, there's someone from the YouTube chat. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the name, but this person's question would like to know if you were close, um, if you've ever been close, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, with Jesus Christ, and are you currently working with him? Yes. Jesus Christ, Yeshua, is one of my friends. We are closely working. Much love and respect. I, um, I just love this energy. I love them. Do you call him Jesus or Yeshua? No, we don't use names here, but yes, Yeshua is good. It's close to the sound as it was called, as he was called in uh, in this specific time and place, although he was in many other times and places, and the name was different. Interesting. You could elaborate on that if you like, just for funsies. Oh, that's a common name there. In <laughs> okay. that time, it's Yeshua. It's, that's it. There is not much to explain. Uh, oh, I was thinking explain. of the different times and different oh. names. Um, yeah, he's uh, deeply involved and uh, incarnates in many places and sometimes he incarnates for the whole life and sometimes he is just popping here and there as uh, my uh, dear teacher Babaji does. Uh -huh. And I do. I just, sometimes I just go down and, uh, and do things. Fine. <laughs> okay. The 
same person has another question. Who are the ascended masters working with the African continent? Or the continent of Africa? Here is uh, the names don't go through Max easily. It sounds like Sumatra, sounds like Tara. Uh, obviously, the Khufu, Khufu is uh, one of them. Mm. Just a sec. Angelics are all there. Sounds like Santa, but uh, I'm sorry, that's uh, um, maybe just mispronunciation. Oh, Santa is because it's saint, I guess, yeah. yeah. Some of the saints. Mm. You know, there is uh, not that many specific Ascended Masters that are not known everywhere else. Um, so many ascendant masters which are already known. Um, Francis of Assisi. Hmm. John Lennon. <laughs> Yes, there is a transformation happening. Yes, it's still, it's still coming. But yes, now it's, uh, it's, it's rising. Mm. Yeah, the closest channel would be Kufu. So connect to Kufu and then through Kufu to, um, to others. Well, hold on a second. The earth energy comes up there. The earth energy, the earth there. The earth energy unites with earth genetics. The strongest there. So, this groundedness brings a new spiritual dimension to ascension through the ground through the roots right to the sky and the sound is a big part of it and they're unpolluted hold on a second root energy El everywhere else the sound is too polished in african sound there is the soul undisturbed it comes clearer undisturbed right there so that sound is a big part of transformation it's honest natural undisturbed That's all I can say at the moment. Thank you. There's another question from Peter. He would like to know what your thoughts are on carbon C60 supplement and its immune strengthening properties and any other properties you might be able to tell us about. 
There is nothing coming here. Unless there is some explanation. I'm sorry. It's... I don't know. I will Google at my leisure. <laughs> right, right. Okay. I'm sorry, Peter. Who just a it. second, just a second. I will just pull something out from the, from the fabric of Matrix. Hold on. Um, do it uh, in waves and charge it with a with a special water. Pay attention to the water which you mix with it. When you drink it, add good water and do it in waves like maybe once a week or maybe a week and then a few weeks uh, may take a break. So it has to go in waves. And I'm saying that without knowing what it is, it is just the uh, ideas which came without me understanding what it is. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I have somebody, uh, Eva has a question, but Mimi Claire 75, who is Lucia, has a question. I'm just saying this out loud because I don't have a question. I don't know where to find her question. If you could type that out, that would be great. So um, we'll let uh, Eva go next, and I'll look for Mimi Claire's question, or she could repost it. OK, thank you. Go ahead, Eva. Thank you. Um, I have another question. Although after you, we talked about the, the mermaids are kind of partially know the answer, <laughs> but I still want to ask, it might be another aspect to it. It seems like there is an epidemic of autism in the United States, which causes a lot of pain to the parents as well. It's, um, it's a challenge to, to a lot of people. Um, my question is one thing, is it true that the thimerosal or another chemicals in, in vaccine have something to do with that or it's not or it's not true or can be many answers to this of course but can you tell us a little bit about the autism and um, is there something positive in it or not or whatever whatever you can thank you just a second. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, It's part of the ascension. Unfortunately for you, unfortunately for us, unfortunately, how do you say, from some of us, the humanity is losing part of it, its uh, flavor temporarily. It's a temporary setback. But the autists are at the same time prodigies and at the same time they are have the capacity of developing their telepathic telepathy telepathic connections so it is a of course it is a complex phenomenon of course some of that is just alien souls incarnating on earth and doing what they usually do and being surprised that they cannot connect to the humans so it's lack of their experience but also it is because the future humanity will be less talkative and more telepathic so the autists very often instead of speaking they just send you the message 
and I'm surprised that you don't hear it. They talk to you, they are, but you don't hear it. So it's not them being aloof, it's us, the older humans, not being able to hear them. They are connected. They are connected to the universe. It is just the old humanity didn't learn a way to talk to them. So, in part, the autists might be their community which will develop the telepathy first. It's still in the open. It could be the, the social humans that will de develop the telepathy. Or it could be a mix of autists and the social humans. Another feature of autists is the ability to disconnect from the nonsense of the modern humanity and be in peace in any situation. And the fact that they hurt others is uh, partially because the others choose to be hurt instead of being in love and united with autists. You know, notice that autists easily accept some of the people. They easily accept children. They easily communicate to animals. It's only their traditional hierarchical male-dominated society that has trouble with them. The tribal people, the shamans, the saints, the yogis, the children, the, the animals, they all fine with autists. They connect on the soul level and they're happy. It's only the dominant society which has trouble with it because it's, it operates on a different level. Yes, some of the vaccines sometimes cause the autism. Electromagnetic changes in the technology, Wi-Fi, 4G, 5G, mostly those. And also the, the energy comes from microwaves and transformers and adapters and power lines and so on. And many other sources, yes, from above and the towers and so on. So all this electromagnetic pollution that disturbs the natural connections. So one way is to become paranoid about that and think about the failure of humanity and the damage they, they do. Another one is to take it easy and adapt. So some people adapt. So the humanity evolves to live in this noisy, electromagnetic, polluted environment. And because it affects your your field, you might develop a new field which actually is beneficial and allows you connect to connect better. I say focus on the future, focus on the positive side. Even those damaging things as chemical pollutants and Electromagnetic pollutants are still can be used as force allowing you to progress and excel. It sounds paradoxical, but that's what happens. Some get hurt and some learn the way to progress. Like adaptation? Yes, adapt and progress. Can we? Uh, it's. Go ahead. Is it wise for us to, um, or does it matter uh, whether we just kind of like I I walk through all my Reiki symbols every day just to clean and clear the field. Um, is that helpful against harmful, uh, whatever? <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right. Pollutants, yeah. Energetic and chemical pollutants, you can use their energy for your own progression. 
If you have enough fire inside, they wouldn't harm you. If you are not paranoid about the danger, you can actually thrive on therapeutic waves. That part of the electromagnetic field is energizing and therapeutic. So if you catch up the waves, catch up the proper way of relating to them, you actually can energize yourself with them. You can charge from electronics. Right. And some of the, of the new generation, that's what they do. It's part of the future humanity. The humanity surprise is merging with your, your electronics. You become a, a hybrid technology biology hybrid and we are seeing it as it is and if it is your choice we respect it so far it looks like it is happening with the accelerated pace and uh, the next root race will be bionic that will contain Android with will contain the biology, the genetics, but also it will be technologically enhanced. We don't know how long it will last. Possibly we will choose to minimize the technical enhancements, but we see a great possibility of developing telepathy with the use of internet. So that is giving us a great hope that the humanity will learn telepathy with the use of electronics, but then it might drop it. So it's your choice, and um, it's not such a terrible choice. I, I respect it. Did you need to know anything more specific about your question? Oh, no, that was, one, that was wonderful. Thank you so much. Okay, great. So Mimi Claire, 75, also Lucia, I think is her name, if it's a she. Okay, um, she would like to know <clears throat> if past lives are behind the chakras, as stated by Takur, and our present is changing our past. Well, she would like you to expand on this subject and help us understand how we are changing our past in our present in yes. relationship with the chakras. Yes. Um, I'm losing the connection. That would be the last question. And uh, I just want to reiterate, you choose your reality and you choose your past lives. You can consciously add a past life to your makeup, spiritual makeup. That's fascinating. <laughs> there are some past lives that already have been chosen for you by your soul, by your connections, by your attractions. They have been intertwined with your, with your soul and plugged in into your biological design. Some is some of them are already there. But as you now progress into a more advanced spiritual worker, you might get attracted to a past life which hasn't been part of you before, but through attraction you can plug it in, basically download the program, download the experience, and make part of your experience. Um, you, it can feel like discovery that oh, I've been that person as well, but it's also a, com a, a conscious choice. You can choose to be connected to one of the past lives. You can choose to be connected to certain energy, and this energy can be intertwined within your spiritual design it's uh Is it's it a in choice the human template or would that be in your dna um 
it can gradually plug in into your DNA as well and uh, transform it. Even DNA is uh, malleable. Even DNA is transformable. Even DNA is uh, mutable and upgradable. So you can plug in the soul first and then your DNA might change with that. It will change. That's some highfalutin interesting information. <laughs> Especially because nowadays the whole matrix is shifting and transforming. It's so easy to redesign the scenario, replay it, re-choose it, choose it differently. Mm -hmm. And if you hate one of your past life, you can't even disconnect from it. Not completely, but choose to ignore it. Um, would it be better to just try to heal it? Of course. <laughs> Let's do the closing. Right. Thank you, Yogananda, for another wonderful Saturday. It's good to have you here. So, in conclusion, <laughs> I would invite you to take it easy. Take it as a cosmic joke, and you are being a joker. Connect to your creative part and understand that you create the whole experience. And the whole experience from a certain perspective is funny. Is funny. So connect to this smile of God. Connect to it. Connect to the smile of the child which is within you. It's all funny because it's not dangerous. There is nothing dangerous here. It pretends to be dangerous, but underneath, it's safe. As we say, ultimately dying is absolutely safe. <laughs> there is nothing bad that happens to you. It's all perception. So it's all uh, serious and not serious at the same time. So smile and choose to smile at any situation choose to remain a child choose to remain a guest and look at everything that happens with surprise of a guest and be amazed and smile sometimes smile with superiority sometimes smile with humility Sometimes smile with apology, but always smile. Because you know better. Because know you are the God in disguise. With that, I conclude. Allah, 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 Allah. I invite the blessings or languages if you like. Is there anyone in the room who would like to offer a language? Light language I can, blessing? I can do a blessing, Michelle. That would be amazing. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yo. Yamaha Kaliya Yan Yom Ya Iya Kiyomo Yo Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Um, oh, go ahead. Um, okay. Um, I see at the end of
Namaste. Thank you, Mermaid. Is there anyone else? Maybe. I think they want me to do a little toning, if that is okay. <clears throat> Thank you, everyone, Thank you. for joining us on this Thank Saturday. You. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, Michelle and Max and Yokananda. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. It's been a pleasure. I think we learned a lot of neat stuff today. <laughs> That's <laughs> very interesting. Very interesting. Um, so join us again next Saturday. I don't actually know who's uh, coming up on the on next week, but we will be here. Jim Jim is going to be channeling next oh, week. Jim, that's right. We'll be back. And yeah. I'm and I'm going to give it, and I will be moderating again. Awesome! Great. So okay. um, everybody enjoy your weekend, or do whatever you want with it. I always feel like I'm like dictating to people, like, have a good day. We'll have any kind of day you want. Okay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> have the day you choose. If, you, day. Want to, if you want to have a bad day, have one of those. If you want to, <laughs> hope all is well in your world. Yeah, okay. Okay. Have a good week, everybody. Talk to you next week. Take care. Bye. Bye, Max. <laughs>